Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub. And on this episode, we're gonna build the Packade. Guys, I cannot tell you how excited I am that so many of you have built my arcade cabinets, both my bar top arcade cabinet and my full size arcade cabinet. Now, one of the questions I get most often is, will you customize a cabinet for me? And unfortunately, I'm not able to do that, but I'm about to make a lot of you very happy. One of the requests that I have gotten over and over and over was there's this 80s model bar top arcade cabinet that only played Pac-Man and Galaga and it had a really unique design that none of the other bar top arcade cabinets had. Well, we're going to make a version of that cabinet today that works with RetroPie and a standard 24 inch off the shelf monitor. That way anybody can build it. And um, in addition to that, we're going to make some updates to the, both this new arcade cabinet and retroactively to the plans for my old bar top and uh, full size arcade cabinet. And that's going to be we're going to add USB ports to the front so that you can attach like Nintendo controllers, Atari 2600, Xbox, all of that through USB. And then the second thing that we're going to add is a hugely requested feature for all of my arcades is a VESA uh, mount backplate for all of them because some people are just simply afraid that the cabinet's going to get tipped over and the monitor is going to fall out. And um, so we're going to add that. I'll add that to all of the plans. And then if you've bought those plans, um, you can simply re-download them for free. Um, that's one of the great things about my plans is anytime I make an update, you can have the revision um, for free if you've purchased them in the past or if you're a member of the guild. So let's get started. Okay, so what I have done is I drew out my design here on this uh, section of MDF. And um, I, a lot of people like to start with SketchUp. Me, personally, I like to just draw it on, on the actual board that I'm going to work with um, or on a big sheet of paper. And then once I get it the way I like it, then I'll copy it or create a version of that in SketchUp and make some adjustments. For whatever reason, that's just easier for me. Uh, but now that I've got the arcade cabinet built in SketchUp, I'm going to just kind of discard this and I'm going to start with a brand new uh, blank slate over here and draw it out because um, this is just a big mess. And then um, I'm going to show you some tips along the way as we go. Okay, so one of the questions that comes up over and over and over, and it's answered in my videos, it's answered on the FAQ on my website, it's answered in the plans, um, but it still keeps coming up, so I keep bringing it up over and over again. And the question is, what is the angle that you used on such and such piece of such and such arcade? And I could give you the angle, and you could sit here with an angle gauge and try to figure it out and, and all of that, but the truth of the matter is there's a far, far better way to do it. And that is, so if, for the example, on the top of this arcade, the front of the arcade is exactly one inch taller than the back of the arcade. So all you do is you measure over one inch, draw your line, and then use another straight edge to connect those two dots. There you go. You don't need the angle. Okay, so here's a, another pro tip um, when it comes to circles and curves. And so on the plans, you'll see that the curve starts three inches over and it starts three inches up on this particular plan, um, on this particular arcade. And so you don't really need to be concerned with what the size or diameter of the circle is. Um, all you need to do is make a mark three inches up um, and three inches over and then draw tick marks. Wherever those intersect is really the only piece of information that you need to know. And then you just use that to draw your curve.
So a lot of you guys that have watched my other videos know that I like to use these little um, backer blocks or some people call them connector strips. Um, but regardless of what you call them, they are just material that's cut to the exact same thickness as whatever the material is you're building your arcade out of. And so in this particular case, these are three quarter by three quarter because my material is three quarter inch thick. And what these do is you simply brad nail and glue them down to the side panels of your arcade and then once the glue dries and you get ready to assemble your cabinet, it makes it very easy for the other panels to just slip into place and they fit exactly. Um, so there's no struggling and you don't have to worry about clamping and all of that. Um, and then just a little bit of glue and a couple of brad nails and then you're good to go and you can move on to the next piece. It makes assembly very fast. So I highly recommend that. Um, it is completely optional. Um, you can just um, use glue and screws or no glue at all if you feel like you want to take it apart at some point in the future. And these are completely optional if you do that. Um, but it really makes it easy for me and so I use them pretty much every time. So what I like to do is since you know your back plate is going to be exactly three quarter inch, so here's an example. We know this is exactly going to be three quarters of an inch thick. So all I do is I use one of these three quarter inch strips um, against the back of the arcade um, or wherever it is we're going to use this. And then with the other one, just add some glue, spread it out and uh, put it on there. Where you put it is not really the, all that critical as long as it um, doesn't overlap any other parts and as long as it's exactly um, the distance of the material that you're using to the back of the arcade. And see, look at that, I just moved it. Line that up again. There we go. There we go. Okay, and this one will be one of the supports for the monitor. And there'll be one on each side, and then we're gonna do, again, a VESA mount on this arcade as well. But this happens to be just exactly the same thickness as the monitor, and so we'll just put it right there on that line. That's where the monitor's gonna sit. And so this backer block will just go right behind that, and that will be the right side support for the back of the monitor. And finally, this will be what the keyboard rests on. And I don't really need a spacer for this because I just drew a line um, where it goes. Well, you guys know how much I love T-molding, but if you don't, it's okay. Just substitute the uh, T-slot bit for a roundover bit and a little sanding and paint and it'll look good too. But uh, I'm a T-molding guy. Okay, here's another little pro tip for you. When you're trying to put these panels together and you wanna make sure that everything lines up perfectly, the easiest way to do that is to take a piece of scrap material that's the same size as the material that you're working with and just use a clamp, a small clamp, and clamp it on. Once you've done that, it's as simple as pushing it on and pulling it back until it stops. Then you know you're perfectly lined up.
One piece of feedback that I get a lot in the comments section and um, in my feedback on my website is if I could include additional templates for the um, control panel. And a lot of times it's simply that they'd want less buttons. So instead of having eight buttons per player, they only want to have four. The simplest solution for that is when you're building the arcade, just drill the buttons that you actually want. So if you only want four of these buttons, don't drill all eight and you'll accomplish the same thing. That being said, I am going to start including, and I will retroactively add this to all of the other plans that I already make, is a single player option. So this single player layout will just have a jo one joystick right in the center um, with one button players, and uh, sorry, with one button, um, <laughs> with one player buttons and a couple of um, additional buttons for coins and things like that. So that'll be included retroactively in the existing plans. And this is what we're gonna use in today's arcade build is this single player layout. All of my plans include spray-on templates for the speaker holes, and so all you have to do, um, just like the keyboard, is spray on a little glue, wave it around just a second to get it tacky, or get it to stick together, and then stick it on the side of the arcade. On all of my arcades, I put a back door on the back of the cabinet, or a maintenance hatch, if you will. And that allows you, because at some point you know you're going to want to make a change to something that's in the cabinet, that allows you to always get inside and make those changes. The back door is actually cut 1 8 inch smaller both directions than the hole that it goes in. This is to leave it plenty of room to open and close without rubbing. And so what I find is I have these just little 16th inch printed circuit boards, but you can use anything, paper, cardboard, whatever, and just lay those on the bottom of the cabinet before you put the door in. And that way you know they'll always be a 16th of an inch all the way around and we'll do that before we install our hinges. And here's another little pro tip for you. When you're mounting the hinge, go ahead and close it to a 45 degree angle the backwards direction. And this will allow you to space it perfectly on the cabinet. So just put it up against the cabinet and drill your holes. Okay, so contrary to popular belief, you actually do need to sand and finish MDF. Um, it's actually a lot easier to finish MDF than it is plywood because MDF doesn't have a wood grain to it. But there are places like right here where there's just a little bit of a gap and we want to fill that in. And anywhere that we shot a brad nail, we also want to fill that in. And so I like to use um, just this plastic wood. It's from DAP, um, but you can use anything you want really. Um, you can also use spackling. It works just fine on MDF. And so we'll just use this and we'll fill in all those gaps and holes. After the wood filler dries, um, which takes about four or five hours, then I like to use um, 220 grit on the random orbital sander just to smooth everything out.
And the last thing we want to do before we prime it is just to put caulk anywhere that there are seams that are going to be visible. And on this particular cabinet, there's only two places, right here and right here. So we'll just put a little caulk on there and then we'll prime it. So I have a whole video on why I like to use filler primer on MDF. And if you want to know more, check that one out. Okay, well for the paint on this cabinet, I'm gonna go with this um, Rust-Oleum rattle can from Home Depot. It's called Oasis Blue, and I think it'll look really good with the black tea molding that I'm gonna use. And this particular paint is a satin. Okay, so I went ahead and installed the T-molding really quickly. And um, if you need help installing your T-molding, I have several videos. Just check one of my other arcade cabinet videos. In addition, I have a whole tips and tricks video for T-molding in the guild you might want to check out. Um, in the same vein, um, I've installed electrical in almost all of my cabinet builds. So if you need some detail on that, um, just check one of those other videos. But I'm going to go ahead and just quickly for this video, um, install the electrical. All right, it's time to put the control panel together. Now, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail in this video because I have plenty of other videos that talk about how to wire up the control panel. Um, but one thing I do wanna point out and let you know is that when you're using these smaller buttons, and I really like to use these for the um, start and select buttons or the one up, two up buttons um, on my cabinets. And, um, but I get some feedback on the website sometimes that they're not deep enough that when you, um, when you put them in the material, especially if you're using three quarter inch material, there's not enough room on the back to install the nuts. And um, there is a solution for that. I have a whole guild video on how to back bore these so that you can put the, um, the nut in and the nut will actually countersink. Um, so check that out if you're having problems with that. So those of you who have watched my other arcade videos know that um, I really like to use these little USB speakers. They sound really good and they're kind of perfect for the form factor of the arcade. But some of you have asked why I hot glue them in and, and the answer is really simple. Hot glue is really strong. Some people don't think it is, but it's really strong, especially if you apply it right. And I really like to use hot glue because it'll last forever and if I ever want to take it out, it's certainly possible to do so. With a little heat from a hair dryer um, or a heat gun, you can just remove it in just a couple of seconds. And so it allows me the ability to change these at any point in the future that I want to and provides for a really simple mounting method. Uh -huh. 
All right, so now we're going to install the monitor. And um, there's a couple of reasons that I select this monitor, and I use it on almost all of my builds. Um, the first reason is it's bezel-less. So the, except for across the bottom, and there's a little Acer logo that you can put a sticker over, or paint it black, or whatever you want to do. But um, it's a bezel-less display for the most part. And so when it fits in the cabinet, there's no big bezel. It looks like it's just a solid piece of glass. The second item, and it's really important when you're building an arcade, is that this monitor remembers its power state. So when you turn this monitor off by unplugging it and plugging it back in, it remembers whether it was on or off when it lost power. And that's perfect for an arcade where we're not going to be able to get these buttons because they're behind a piece of wood. So in the case of a power failure, when the, when the arcade gets power again, the monitor will just turn right back on because it remembers that it was on when it lost power. So let's go ahead and install this. So mounting the display is really simple. You just set it on the base and then tilt it back. And it's going to be a little bit tight, and that is by design. It makes it a nice pressure fit. And then you can also put a VESA mount behind it if you want it to be um, really resilient. Okay, so the new Bar Top Arcade is complete, and I'm calling this one the Packade. And some of those of you who are watching are saying, hey, we didn't see you put the graphics on. And this is true, I didn't show it in the video because this video is already just too long. So I'm gonna have another video where I show how to do that. But I did just use a vinyl cutter called a Cricut. You can get them at pretty much any craft store, um, or you can get it online at Amazon. And um, you can make all kinds of cool graphics and lettering. Um, that's how I made the iconography for the buttons. Um, and they're just uh, little um, vinyl cutouts that you stick underneath the button. And, um, and we'll have a whole other video on that process at some point. Um, I want to talk about just a few things that make this arcade different from the other one that I made previously and most of the things that I've done to this one will be able to be retrofitted to that cabinet and I've updated the plans um, so that you can add some of these features. The first one is um, the front USB ports and I have a whole video on the guild about adding USB ports to your computer or sorry to your arcade and so check that out um, if you want more details but these are just USB ports that I bought off of Amazon. Um, one thing that I got a lot of feedback on. I didn't show it in the video and I promised I would, but um, unfortunately the camera did not turn on when I thought it was on. But there is a vase amount available for this. It's also in the plan. So if you want to make the uh, monitor be held on firmly from behind rather than just kind of a press fit like I generally do, you can add that. Um, the next thing, I got a lot of feedback from people that said they really didn't want a lighted marquee because they felt like it would waste a lot of energy. And so the packade does not have a lighted marquee. Normally there would be about another three inch, four inch section on top with a banner with an LED behind it. And we didn't do that on this particular arcade. Although it wouldn't be that hard to modify the plans and add that if you really wanted it. Um, and so anyway, the next thing that I think is really awesome is that I have two templates now, one for single player and one for two player. A lot of people just say the, the bar top arcades are too small and I'll never play two player on them. And, um, and quite honestly, I just think it sort of looks cool to have the joystick right in the center and some buttons on the side. So I use the one player option on this build, but you can certainly use a two player option. Um, the templates are included for either one. The other thing that I added to the back of the cabinet is a fan option. So a lot of you feel like that um, it needs some more cooling. And so I don't really think that a fan is necessary for a Raspberry Pi build, but I did include a fan option and there's also a, a drilling template for making holes for the fan and installing it if you decide to put a fan in your uh, cabinet. So that's it for the packade. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video.